You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. Folks, let's now go to Atlanta, where a huge announcement oh. was made today. News broke last night that the, uh, that the uh, mayor of Atlanta was not going to be seeking re-election. Keisha Lance Bottoms, who held a fundraiser with President Joe Biden in March, raised half a million dollars, announced that she was not seeking re-election. There was initial speculation saying she would be taking a corporate job at Walgreens. She said that wasn't the case. She gave no specific reason as to why she is choosing now to step back. This is her news conference today. This has been my highest honor to serve as mayor of this city. And many of you all have heard me speak of my family's history in this city going back almost 100 years. My grandmother would tell me how her, her father, who was a child of people who were once enslaved from Crawfordville, Georgia, packed up a horse and buggy, and they made their journey to Atlanta. My family moved to the west side of Atlanta, and they found community, and they found purpose, and they found a way to make the lives of their children better. And I stand here on their shoulders. So my love for this city was a love planted in my heart long before I was formed in my mother's womb. And I wish that I could tell you there was a moment or that there was a thing. Um, but when you have faith and you pray for God's wisdom and guidance uh, in the same way that it was very clear to me almost five years ago that I should run for mayor of Atlanta. It is abundantly clear to me today that it is time to pass the baton on to someone else. Um, I'm reading a story in the Land Journal Constitution right now where a close friend said that uh, Mayor Bottoms, in her first year in office, uh, really began to have second thoughts about why she wanted the job. In fact, this is a quote, uh, quote, she just didn't have her heart in it, said one close friend. Uh, Michael, this is interesting because, uh, and it's shocking to a lot of different people, because mm -hmm. she barely won uh, when she ran uh, by little more than 400 votes. Right. Um, she beat uh, a white councilwoman uh, who mm -hmm. was trying to become the first white mayor of Atlanta since uh, 1972. Also, uh, also uh, she, like I say, had the fundraiser. Uh, according to an internal poll that was leaked, she had a 68% approval rating. But uh, there have been lots of uh, issues there, a significant spike in crime in Atlanta, some folks saying she felt detached or out of touch. Uh, and now what this has done, it has now thrown open uh, the door. Uh, many people were expected, only a couple of candidates had announced they were going to oppose her. Uh, many saw her as a shoe-in. And what you have now are folks saying, can Atlanta – continue having a black mayor the state legislature they have been trying to take control of the airport that is the crown jewel of the state of georgia uh mm -hmm. and of course one of the busiest airports in the world uh and so what do you make of this surprise announcement uh by keisha lance bottoms who many were talking about who turned down uh, a spot in the Biden administration and now is saying i want out of politics completely uh, you know, brother, it, on one hand, it's a shocker. On a, on the other hand, um, it's, n it's not necessarily a shocker when you understand the trials and tribulations of being a big city mayor. 
okay? Um, that is a hard job. And not only that, you're dealing with a dumbass governor, Brian Kemp. See, it'd be different if you got support from the governor. She doesn't have, she really don't have support from the governor. She has a, she has a, a white supremacist, Trump supporter, who is doing the bidding of Donald Trump, signing the law SB202, the voter restriction bill. So uh, I've never served in political office, but I've been involved in writing public policy here in the city of Detroit. And I, I can tell you, man, a lot of times it's a thankless job. And then also she has small children as well. And you get to the point where you start asking yourself, okay, see, you, you always go in with enthusiasm and all these things that you want to change. And then you get in and you see, you really don't know how things really work until you really sit in that seat and you get all these different elements coming at you, okay? And then you start getting to the point, you ask the question, is this really worth it? Do I want to do this for another four years? Do I want to sacrifice time for my family? Do I want to, my blood pressure to raise? And then you had those, you know, police shootings as well. You had the shootings with uh, involving the two college students. You had Rashad Brooks, things like this. You, and you start realizing, okay, do I want to endure this for another four years? This is not, this is, this is not what I thought it was going to be. So on, on the one hand, uh, it's a shock. On the other hand, um, you know, no, I can I can understand. You know, she she says, "Look, I want to do something else. I may not know what it is, but I want to do something else." She did not rule out a future role in politics, uh, Brittany. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the reality is uh, many people, again, they see uh, these jobs as being um, highly sought after. Uh, and if, the, if, if it was all about her heart's not in it, uh, to me, that's one of those deals where you step down because it's, it, it is about what's best for the city. Uh, just, your, just your take on uh, this uh, big announcement from, from Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms. Yeah, Roland, you know, it sounds like she's really just exhausted. I mean, between the investigation of her predecessor, you know, all of the racial justice protests that have taken place there, COVID, having to deal with uh, Brian Kemp, just to name a few. I mean, I can only imagine, so many of us can only imagine. And, you know, during her time in office, you mentioned this earlier, you know, we've seen a rise in violent crime in the city. I think homicides were up about 60%. So there's a lot of pressure on her and really anyone that's going to take the position after her. You know, I, I certainly don't always share all the same politics as her, especially in her response to the George Floyd protest and things like that that have taken place in Atlanta. But if nothing else, I do applaud her for stepping down when she's no longer interested or motivated or just exhausted because for her to continue to hold that position when she's not fully invested anymore would actually be a disservice to her constituents. Um, Candace, what's very interesting is that she this clearly was not something that, uh, that just happened out of the blue. Uh, last night, um, she dropped uh, a uh, full-page um, ad, if you will, a letter to the city. Uh, they also uh, produced uh, a what a, a highly produced video uh, descri des describing her accomplishments. So clearly, clearly, uh, this has been something that had been in the works for quite some time. Yeah, it, it has. It has. And I think that it's one of those things that a lot of us can recognize, especially as a black woman in America, that at her age, which is not old and it's not young, but it is a good age to look at your life and say, what exactly do I want to do with it? Do I want to be here for another four years after I need to complete this year? Then I'm running into eight years, almost a decade of my life. Who am I now? Who will I be? Who do I want to be? This is a really wonderful time for her to plant those seeds and make it happen. All of these doors are open for her and she can you know, morph her life into anything that she wants at this time. And to have the opportunity to be able to just sit back and look is an opportunity that we all wish for. And she's in a position where she can do so. And she's doing this not just for her, but she's also doing it for the city. Because if she wants to be someplace else, if her mind is someplace else, if her heart is someplace else, then she should be someplace else than the mayor of the city of Atlanta. 
Absolutely. Um, uh, so uh, we'll see what happens now. The question is, will Kasim Reed, the former mayor, will he run? He was a huge supporter of her uh, when she um, uh, sought the office. But the last few months, he had been taking some shots at her. And privately, you had some city leaders encouraging him to run against her. In fact, in that statement that she dropped, this is what she said, quote, she hit him with this, a far-reaching and ever-growing federal investigation into the prior administration consumed City Hall, leaving employees paralyzed and fearful of making the smallest mistakes, lest they too be investigated or castrated on the evening news. Ouch, Michael. <laughs> yeah, you know, brother, um, <laughs> she she is inheriting... Uh, she's coming behind Mayor Kasim Reed. You had this federal investigation. It's no telling what's going on, not implicating him or anything, man. But I live in Detroit, so we've we've been through, uh, you know, some federal <laughs> investigations before. Uh, I ain't gonna call no names, but we've been through some federal investigations before. I went to some. I went to school with some of the people that were involved in the administration that was investigated. Some some of them after the investigation, it was hard for them to find jobs. You know, so it's like, look. Um, you know, so, and the other thing is, okay, you got to be careful when you're the one on the investigation, you kind of got to be careful about throwing shade at other people. Uh, cause I don't know if the investigation is over with, there's no telling what they're going to find. Hopefully they won't find anything, but you know, we, you know, uh, in Detroit, you know, I ain't gonna call no names, but <laughs> you, you, you don't know how these investigations could go. So, but I, I can understand uh, her point of view, and it's just, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, man, a lot of times it's a thankless job. Seriously, it's a thankless job. People see, you know, you get the, you make the money, you have this position, all this stuff. Brother, dealing with Negroes can wear you out. I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm just going to be honest with you, brother. It can wear you out. Brittany. Uh, what do you, you know, again, having a former mayor take some shots, uh, uh, it's not good for you. And, uh, she, she, she threw, uh, she threw a punch herself. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't, I don't blame her. I would have thrown those punches back, especially considering, you know, what, what has it been after, you know, stepping, stepping in behind him and, and, and walking into something like that. I can truly only imagine. And, you know, she has been to give her some grace. She has been under a ton of pressure. She's running a major area. Um, that can't be, that can't be easy. So, uh, again, power to her blessings to her. I hope that she, um, finds a space that she is happy in. And I also hope Atlanta, um, gets some new leadership, some new black leadership, uh, that's going to take us forward. <laughs> Candace, final comment on this topic. Listen, out of all the things that she could have included in her speech, she made sure to include that because she remembers the shots that the former, um, mayor said about her. So she made sure that she included them. Lest we forget what he did. Let us remember what he did. Let us know about this investigation. Not only is he probably lining up, but we're going to have at least 12 others, like we did the first time, line up. But she wanted to make sure that the message was to him so that people would not forget that he was under investigation and still is, and that investigation is ongoing. She could have talked about a lot of people, but she made sure to talk about him that was on purpose. All right, folks, back to that road, video in just one moment. It's time to be smart. When we control our institutions, we win. We win. This is the most important news show on television of any racial background. Y'all put two, three, four, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, thirty dollars on this and keep this going. What you've done, Roland, since this crisis came out in full bloom. Anybody watching this, tell your friends. Go back and look at the last two weeks, especially of Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, hell, go back and look at the last two days. You've had sitting United States senators today, Klobuchar and Harris. Whatever you have that you have, you can bring to Roland Martin Unfiltered to support it. Please do, because this information may literally save your life. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com.